Hi, welcome back to a new Node.js video. I promised that we would have a look at the different templating engines. And I'm going to start with Jade, which is the default engine that shipped with our, well, our boilerplate here, basically, we set up. And I want to introduce you to that language, how it works, or how this templating engine works, and how we can create our HTML files with it and output the content dynamically there. Let's start. I opened the layout.shade file in our fuse folder. And this is the kind of root layout that our other fuse are extending. And here's the first feature. We can, well, extend layouts and insert content there dynamically. So here, for example, in the layout.shade file, we're providing a basic, basic skeleton for all our layouts. This is a basic HTML document skeleton and there we can dynamically enter, well, the, the specific content of our other layouts. We'll get back to this in a second because now you might wonder, this is our HTML skeleton. It doesn't really look like HTML, right? That's one of the most important things about Jade. We don't use the standard HTML tags there, but we use indentation to structure our document. So the tag names are the same. We have our doc type HTML at the beginning, but in a normal HTML file we would have like, like this, right? This would be how it is written in a normal HTML element, uh, yeah, document. Our HTML element might look like this, and also we would have closing tags. We don't have this in shade. We don't have the well smaller and greater signs to create our tags. We just have the tag names, and we use indentation to make clear on which well, level we're currently at and how we nest elements. So we don't have opening and closing tags, we only have the tag name, and then you can think of all these tags which are indented one indentation to the right are inside this HTML tag. Therefore, all these two elements here are inside the head tag. And this block thing, which I will explain in a second, is inside the body tag. So for example, if I want to create, let's say, an unordered list here, I would create our unordered list. This is the default HTML selector element tag, just without, well, the greater and the smaller side uh, uh, operators. This is my unordered list. Now I hit enter, it automatically indents for me, otherwise I would have just to, well, go one indentation to the right. And here I have my list item. And, well, now I want to enter some text I want to display between the opening and closing list item tag. I just have an, well, I hit space to have an empty space here. And then I enter my, my text, whatever I want to output, just like that normal text. Now, if I save this and reload this page, you can see we now get this bullet point here. And if I have a look at the source code, we can see it's inside this unordered list element. This is basically how we structure our code here. We're using this indentation and we're outputting text between two elements just by writing it behind the element with a, an empty space between. Now, if we have more text and we don't want to like enter this all in one line, here, let's say like this, it's very, very long. You can also enter a new line, but now it would think of this as a new tag, which it would not recognize. Therefore, I enter a dot here indent this to the right, and now I can have multiple lines here. If I save this and reload, you see we get this new list item, and all this text is inside this one list item element here, even though we have multiple lines here. If I remove the dot, you can see now it's thinking these are separate elements. You can already see it here in my editor, and if I reload, well, it's kind of broken because we have this DSF and whatever element which are obviously not recognized. So this dot here is important to have a multi-line string following this tag. So I hope this is clear how we use our HTML tags here, how indentation is important for nesting all these elements and that we don't have the opening and closing elements and how we can output text there. Now, you might say, okay, this is very nice, but I also might have some CSS classes or some attributes I want to attach, right? Well, you sure have. So, let's go one to the left, so that we're on the same level as this unordered list. And here I want to create an input element. 
and this should be of type text. How do I do this? We use parentheses for this. Now, in these parentheses, we can specify all attributes we want to attach to this HTML element, like type equals and then a string text. Let me save this and reload. And reload. Now we got this input element here, and as you can see, you got this type text element attached to it. Now, if you also went to want to add a class and let's say um, an ID, we do this a class set by just adding a dot and then a class name. So class name, this will add the CSS class class name. And then if we add a hashtag, we can add with an ID. Let me save this, reload, again inspect this. As you can see, it has the ID, any ID, and the class class name. If you're using Emmet, which is a plugin for many editors, which you see that the MyVideos 2 allows you to write code by uh, or enter normal in the HTML tags by just writing dot, class name, hitting tab, and it creates a div, that's a similar syntax here. We're adding CSS class with a dot in front of the name and IDs with a hashtag in front of the name. So that's one important thing. Now, here's another important thing. In the title of our layout here, you see that I got title equal and not title space. If I remove the equal sign and reload this page, watch this title in the tab here. It's now title. If I add the equal sign and reload, it's express. Because title, if we have an equal sign right after the tag name, refers to a variable which is inject, so to say, into this template, which is added. And it is then through, well, node in this case, here in our index route, here, where we're rendering our index file, we're referring here to our index um, layout, or index jade file, we're setting this title variable express. So if I change this here to cool, huh, and save this, and reload, Oh, and I restart my server and then reload, you can see I got cool, huh? So this is how we insert variables with this JavaScript object. I already said this in the last video, I think, into our template. And in the template, we can then output it with this, but by using just a variable name, we set in this JavaScript object, but this equal sign is important to tell Jade, hey, don't render the following thing as text, use this variable, it is a variable, and use whatever this variable contains. Another important feature is we might have if statements here. So we might have if, let's say, condition is true, then we want to display just, let's say, a paragraph which says it's true. Now, obviously, we don't have condition yet. And we could either just specify it here in our route and add another variable here. Let me do this. Condition should be, you know, let's say it's true. We start the server and reload this page. Now you can see it's true. And if I set it to false here, and again we start to this, it's gone, even though it's still in my shade file, because here we're checking on this condition. Very important. Now, this is um, how we can if use if conditions. By the way, we can also define variables inside this shade template if we need to for any reason. We can quickly do this by adding a minus, a hyphen, and then var condition equals true. Now, this is always true. If I, and I only this in the template, therefore I need to, no, need to restart my server. If I now reload, we can again see this even though we're still passing it as false here, but I'm overwriting it in my layout by, well, setting it basically as a new variable, okay? So this is clear how we can set variables and how we can use these control structures which are obviously not classic HTML tags or, or syntax, but added by chat templating engines. We may also loop. So let me say I have another variable Oops, let me go back here. Variable um, 
which I will call just um, any array. And this should just be, well, an array of three numbers. Now notice that I never have a semicolon or anything like this at the end, because in J templating engine, you do everything with indentation. There is no need to tell when an end, uh, where, when a line ends, because well, indentation and line breaks are the way how you structure your element, uh, your document. So this is my variable, and now I want to. Um, well, create a new loop. I can say for each value, this value will be dynamically created in my any array here. I want to do something. Let's say I want to, well, I'll put a new paragraph with this value. Now I'm again using this equal sign to make sure I don't want to output a text of value, but I want to refer to this value variable, which I'm creating here. So let me save this and reload. And now you can see I got one, two, three here. This is how we use loops. Now the last important thing I want to cover in this video is this block thing. Maybe you already wondered that in this index.js file, in our route, we're rendering a route or a view called index. And we do have an index file here, index.shade. But I was making all the changes in the layout.shade file and yet, well, it appeared here. The reason is, let me get rid of all of that, that as I said at the beginning, this layout serves as our basic layout as the skeleton, which other layouts reuse and extend and add their content into it. And we can provide basic hooks in our skeleton where we want our inheriting layouts or uh, views to be able to insert content. We define such hooks with the block keyword so we're setting block content here, and this means this is a content block which can be used by our views extending this layout to insert something. Let's see how this works in the index.shade file. Here you can see we're having a declaration at the beginning which says extends layout, which just says this view, this document is based on this layout.shade file. It's the same, but add something to it. It inherits from this file. So we're extending this layout. This layout name obviously has to match this layout name here before the dot .shade. And then we're saying, I want to add something to this document, but I can't just write it here, right? This, this would not work because this layout shade file is closed in itself. We only provide these hooks where an extending layout may enter something. So we call in this block content here, and in here we're again having this block content. And by this we're identifying, hey, I want to insert something into this block content, and this is what I do insert. I again insert the title, express, cool, huh? that's why it's appearing here too. And then again I have a paragraph with, again using this title. Oh, and here we see another notation. If we have a mixture of normal text and a variable, we insert this variable by using hashtag and then curly braces and the variable name between the curly braces to uh, basically insert this variable, the content of this variable, inside our normal text. This is how we work with the J templating engine. These are the very basics, and I will start working with that in our Node.js projects, but I will show our templating languages throughout the next videos too. So I hope this helps you understand this templating language. And of course, you will also learn more when we're actually using it in the next videos. See you there. Bye.